So today we have on Lori Marquez. She's going to be talking to us about um, the parenting secrets when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to um, parenting an athlete. And uh, she's going to give me her perspective. Her kid is a very successful baseball player, and she has another one coming up, and she's going to tell you more about that. So enough talking. Let's get into it. Uh, thank you, Lori, for jumping on. Anytime. Anytime I can help anybody, it's what I'm here for. Perfect. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about your story, where are you guys from, how many kids you have. Just give us a little rundown of where you're at and catch us up to right now. Okay. Well, my oldest, like I said, he literally just graduated this year from college. He played four years at Central Baptist College, but of course he started in T-ball. He was born in 97. He started T-ball at age four, so about 2001. And at the time we lived in Michigan. Huh. He played T-ball for a couple of years and he was on some travel teams, some select teams, and he played in Michigan, it was Little League, so that establishment is through, you know, Pennsylvania, Little League, actual Little League, and made did some major tournaments even at a young age and um, was state champions on pretty much every year. And he made it through uh, coach pitch, and then we moved here in 2004 to Texas, and at that time he was in fourth grade. And in the South, they don't do Little League Baseball. They either have uh, Dixie Baseball, or at the time was, um, what was it? It was a, it was, oh, started, it was Texas, trying to think what the other one was. Um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I apologize. But he ended up sticking with the Dixie League um, all the way through up till high school. And then um, he also played select travel ball all those years um, while he was playing Dixie for City. And um, he did quite a few tournaments with his, his team that he actually, you know, I say grew up since fourth grade with. So th this cluster of team members, they, they basically grew up together, played together, even started high school together and so forth. And in high school, um, obviously, we are UIL for the state of Texas, but off-season, he still stuck with playing uh, select travel ball, and he still continued in Dixie at first, but then he switched over to what's called American Legion baseball, and on his own, not through the school, he went quite far in American Legion. His team actually went to World Series. Wow. And they came in second place. The Louisiana team, and that's who hosted it that year, actually beat the t our, t our team. And that was his senior year, actually, because I still have the newspaper clipping. Um, one thing I want parents to really understand for an athlete, and this is for female or, or boys, I mean, either way, for an athlete, it's not cheap. You don't get the support you think you're going to from schools, especially when your athlete hits the high school level. It takes a lot of determination and hard work from the parent to really push their, their child, their athlete to go further. So if your child or your athlete doesn't have the drive on their own they don't you don't need to push them bottom line don't push your child just because you were the best growing up and you may even went to college because I did I, I played softball in college until I had a career-ending injury but I never pushed my children to to live my dream and that's what I really see a lot of parents from you know t-ball up especially when you get into competitive and travel is it's the kids. You don't live your dream. That that really gets me when I see the parents pushing kids that honestly shouldn't be. Now, as a, I've coached and my husband has coached all the way up through to high school level because, you know, when you're playing city leagues and travel, obviously uh, coaches are parents pretty much. And 
I would rather take a kid that may not be the world's best player, but has the best attitude, shows up, listens, gives a hundred percent, but has the best attitude than the kid that can, you know, supposedly hit a home run every time he's up to bat or throw an out every time he's got the ball in his, in his mitt. That's the type of player that I, as a coach and as a parent coach want, and I've listened when I was going through this with my oldest son to all the college coaches, when we were taking him to showcases that I'll get into in a few minutes, that's what coaches actually do look for. They look for that kid that's going to give a hundred percent. If you got to push your child, you need to step out because if you take away the joy, they're never going to be playing at their best. Agreed. They've got to have the joy. I mean, bottom line, you never do anything in life if you don't have the joy for something. You're doing something because you're made to do it. You usually have a bad attitude. You usually just don't give 100%. So the, so one thing I just say is don't don't push your kids to try to live your dream. Um, getting back to, for for instance, Jordan, when he was in high school, like I said, if, if you know that your kid's got a chance to really go far, it's not going to be a cheap dream for them. And it's going to take a lot. Now, do I know of things to raise money? Yes. And that's something we could talk about at a different time or even today, whatever. But it is expensive from taking your kids to showcases, to entering them in tournaments, to hotels, to depending on how far the tournament is, the travel. I mean, just everything. Expense, expense, expense. Even equipment. Expense. Um, Getting back to my oldest in college, or well, he's graduated college, but so he's in high school. He's playing ball for them. They go to state. They each year got knocked out in the second to third round for states, but they would, you know, go pretty decent. And one thing his high school coach would always pick on him and one other kid and always say, you're my lazy player. You're never going to do anything. You're never going to amount to it. And guess what? He had a son that played, and he thought that kid would just walk on water. Guess what? That kid tried out in college. That kid never got picked up. And out of everybody on his high school team, my son was the only one that got a college offer and played college baseball. Now, I am from a smaller town. Yes, so recruiting is very hard. Now, when you're in bigger towns and bigger cities, recruiting is, is bigger and, and more uh, able to be seen. But for those parents like myself that are from small towns, that's where I say the expense comes, and that's where I say that it takes the determination and the hard work from the parents because we have to then do the work that you would think a coach would do, and they don't. I'm the one that would record all his games. I'm the one that put together the videos. I'm the one that emailed coaches. You know, this, like I said, it, it's it's a group, group work effort. So um, basically his junior year of high school, like I said, he was still playing in the American Legion and doing extremely well. So he already had a reputation in this in this area of being a great ball player. But what we started to do with him, and you got to think, this is now about five years ago. I've learned a lot since then because now I have a younger child that's a junior this year that I'm doing something a little different because I know of new things. But five years ago, what we did was we put Jordan in college showcases. Again, there's expenses because they aren't local. We had to go as far as Dallas, which for me is a three-hour drive from where we live, which required hotel stays, things like that. And it was through going to multiple uh, college showcases that that's where he actually got spotted by college coaches. And it was because he went to these over and over. So his name was on these rosters and these same coaches from all over, not just Texas. They came from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, pretty much. I mean, there was even some coaches from the northern states. But anyway, because he repeatedly were, was in these showcases, anytime I saw a showcase available, we took him. His name got out there. And sure enough, he got his first offer. Can I, uh, can I ask how many showcases did you actually go to? Um, I want to say 
off the top of my head without looking at my records, at least 10 between his junior and senior year, at least 10. Because at the time he was also playing football and he was, um, his junior year, he was considered top 100 prospects in the entire state of Texas for football. So he was kind of torn at that point because he was so good. He was a kicker. He could kick a field goal from his, from one end of the field to the other. He was, ast- he was just phenomenal. So he was kind of torn in his junior year. He started saying, well, maybe, but this is where I said, if they don't have the determination and the love, that's where you've got to be careful because he's like, you know what? No, baseball is my primary baseball. I love, I'm going to devote all my time to baseball. So being the top 100 football players in the entire state of Texas, he did not play his senior year because he devoted all his time to baseball. Interesting. And like I said, through his junior and senior year, we did all the college showcases and that's how he got seen. Now, coming back to my youngest son, who's a junior now in high school, he's been playing same thing. He's, he started in um, T-ball, but because he, he started T-ball here in Texas, obviously he's been in the Dixie and he played, you know, all the way up to high school, also did travel, select teams, um, started high school baseball. And unfortunately, as you well know, coaching staff change sometimes like they change their underwears. So his school, which, you know, was the school my son actually graduated from, they have really had a bad turn- turnover when it comes to baseball coaches. So um, unfortunately, they haven't gone very far. In fact, honestly, the last year that the baseball team actually went far was the year Jordan graduated, which was 2015. So Justin's team, yes, they've played together since they were in T-ball, but as a group, they don't have that cohesiveness that Jordan's team did. They have the type of parents that think my kid's all that in a bag of chips. Um, you better play my kid where I say he goes because it's very political in my little town. So what I've decided to do because my son wants to pursue baseball is, well, he wasn't at the time old enough to do college showcase because again, you have to be a junior. I really started researching to say, what can I do to help him? You know, at the time he's in ninth grade and I found this program called baseball youth. It has been phenomenal. It is extremely expensive, but college coaches, I even seen minor and major league uh, uh, scouts at these tournaments that this program puts on. And this program starts at 8U and taps out at 14U, but then it goes to all American which is what Jordan or my youngest Justin just finished because that goes up to uh, 14U. So now he's gone up to what's called Game Day USA, which goes up to 18U. So these tournaments are all over the U.S. and they get players that come to these tournaments from Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Mexico. Um, Japan was his last one. There was a kid from Japan. Um, just it's a phenomenal program, but yes, it's expensive. But the thing is, is his stats are continuously kept within this program and are shared and available online. I can pull up, even though he's aged out of the one, I can still pull up his stats from his, you know, they do the skills drills, his home, he won the home run derby for his age group uh, two years ago. We played um, the New Year's Eve Classic in Florida. Um, he, uh, they just, they keep all that. And like I said, um, scouts are all over, all over these, these tournaments. And um, he's got one coming up here in August back in Cincinnati, Ohio, that he'll be playing in. And he's now moved up to 16U because he turned 16 in July. He's a junior. And so this is the program that we have found that is going to work for him. Now, because he is in these tournaments, I'm still going to put him in the college showcases, though, because I do know that those work. I'm just saying for parents that, you know, have younger kids, you know, like I said, starting from, like, 
uh, baseball youth is 8U is their youngest division. Had I known about it back then, then even Justin or Jordan, if they had it back then, I don't know when baseball youth was developed. But anyway, I would have had my kids in that program all along. So I'm thankful that it's out there, and I just want to get the word out that that is an excellent program for parents. But, again, it is costly. And how, uh, how many showcases would you let um, Justin go to? Are you going to just keep going until he gets an offer, or are you going to cut yourself off? You know, because I see most time with parents, they go to, like, three showcases, or kids go to three co- showcases, and then they say, ah, it doesn't work. So are you the type of parent that says, okay, keep going, keep going and give yourself the best opportunity or are you shutting yourself down? No, I never shut down, first of all, because um, as you well know, uh, different states have different rules. UIL here in Texas, these coaches, when I took Jordan, they can't go to Jordan and offer him anything. It's illegal. They have to contact me, things like that. They would they do get to talk to the players like coaches are able to talk to the players about their skills and what they need to improve on because they get these test scores at the end of the showcase saying, you know, this is the level we feel you're at, whether it's intermediate, you know, advanced, things like that. This is where we think that you need to work on if you ever feel like like that you want to play college baseball. So that's the only thing that they can say to this athlete themselves if they are interested in your, your athlete, they have to talk to only the parent. And let me tell you, if they talk to your kid and say, Hey, we want you, boom, you need to back the fudge away from that coach because he's breaking the rules. And that already tells me, you don't care about my kid. You just care about the bottom line and what you want on that team. And that's not the type of team I want my son to play for bottom line. So I'm, I'm going to say no on that, but no. Um, obviously when you go to these as you know, unless you're like the most phenomenal player out there, you're not going to really get offers as a junior because these coaches know the drill. They know you still have a whole nother year of eligibility of playing high school ball to develop even better. And that obviously as a junior, if your parents are putting you in these showcases now, more than likely the parents are going to continue putting you in these showcases as a senior. And so the only reason why we stopped was because a he had graduated and yes because he had graduated you know that um graduations usually depending on what state may or june but by i think i want to say college scouts usually contact the parents that want to offer students uh scholarships it's usually that november right you know because like i said they graduate may or june so it's usually a few months prior and i think it was november when they started contacting us, meaning his dad and I, the offers. And then, you know, obviously as a family, we had to discuss and pray about it to see what, you know, school he wanted to decide to go with. So that was the only reason why he stopped was because had had he not gotten offered, you still have a chance to go to these showcases because you can go as unsigned college athletes. So we we would have continued, but he got signed. Gotcha. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, now let's flip over to the development side. You're talking about your kid pitching and limiting them. So can you oh, talk yeah. about that whole thing and like what okay, was your yeah. whole process? For okay, so the other day I told you about a th- what I heard. Okay, we remember how I said that Jordan's team, his American Legion team, went to the World Series in Louisiana. There was a scout there from the Rockies and he sat behind me in the stand and I'm a mom. So I'm a talker. If you can't tell, (laughs) I struck up a conversation with him because he started making comments when my, our kids were out on the field and he was asking me like, who, who was that? Who was this? Da, 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 da. Because there was another kid on Jordan's team that he went to school with at Central Baptist and he was a pitcher. Jordan's a third baseman backup pitch. And he started asking me questions, things like that. And he kept telling me, he's like, I want you to know this as a parent. He said, us scouts and our, us for real scouts try to, as a last resort, pick up pitchers or catchers from any Southern states. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, think about it. How long has your kid played ball? 
I said, well, since T-ball, he was uh, four years old. He said, exactly. And if you start a pitcher or a catcher at four years old and you live in the South and you can basically play year round, what have you done to their arm? How long do you think their career is going to last? So I'm like, hmm, that's a good point. So from a professional level, hearing that, and I'm talking, he was from the Rockies. I, that really clicked because all these years growing up, I would see so many coaches abuse their pitchers and catchers. There was one year on my, uh, I'm trying to think on Justin's team. We had this kid, his name was Tanner. This kid would have been the most phenomenal pitcher. I'm, I'm not joking, like phenomenal. Like I'm talking Nolan Ryan phenomenal, but they pitched him and they were only in eighth grade pitched that kid 114 pitches I was ticked I was like are you freaking kidding me just because you want to win and that's like I said I understand that these are parent coaches they don't know that you know what they're really doing to these athletes but it takes the parent to understand and step up and be like "Uh uh-uh I'm pulling my kid so for pitchers or catchers I understand that we want to develop our pitchers and catchers. I I get that. But you got to understand their arms and their rotator cuff can only last so long. And if you start them such a young age as a, as first string and let these coaches abuse them, your kid's not going to make it bottom line, because, you know, we're not machines. You know, our kids aren't machines. They're, they're human beings and their arms can only do so much. And so my biggest thing that I tell, you know, personally, my friends that have pitchers and catchers, let them be phenomenal for two to three innings max. They can develop every single year even better, but don't, don't hurt them if you want them to actually make something of a life in, in the career of baseball. I mean, that's the biggest thing I can say. And that, like I said, that came from an actual major league scout. And then just seeing from my own personal experience, I mean, your knees and your rotator cuff can only handle so much. So you've been to all these college showcases and you kind of talked about you talking to scouts. Uh, What's your advice to parents that are sitting in the stands? How should they act? How should they not act, you know, in in showcases? Because you see a lot of parents who are just, you know, a really aggressive you see you know what I mean so talk about uh your experience and your advice to the parents in that regard okay first of all I always have respect for coaches because like I said most of the time so you get in upper levels it's parent coaches they're not getting paid they're totally volunteers my biggest thing even if I disagree with a coach I never call them out I never get in their face I don't say come here on the side of a dugout, you know, I don't tell them what to do. Bottom line, that's their team. They need to do what they got to do. The only time, the only time I will make a comment to a coach is like I said, if I feel that my son could get hurt, that's about it. Because like I said, even if you're doing plays or putting him in a position that I think he's not good at. He needs to be at his, you know, third base because my son would have to play left field sometimes. And like I said, he's a starting third base player, but he played left field sometimes, you know, but I didn't complain. I didn't, you didn't hear me in the stands whining. Why is my kid out? He he needs to be here, here, here. And that's what you hear from all these parents. And that's where I get back to the quit living your kid's dream and through you let them be them. Let them play. Let them enjoy the game. If they don't like it, they can go to their coach. But if you're any player, you know you don't second-guess your coach. The only time you second-guess a coach or tell your a coach no is if you're hurt. And if a parent – and like I said, if a parent says no, you're playing my son too long, I want him out. That's the only time, and that's only because I think he could get hurt. Because I – you know, as a parent, we know when our kids' arms are, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can read our kids better than anybody. I gave birth to them. <laughs> I can tell when I see a wince. All right, it's time for him to come out. That's the time. <laughs> but there, yes, unfortunately, in sports, and it's not just baseball, but you have those parents that just want to raise Cain, 
be hooping and hollering, screaming it. Oh my gosh, I hate this. Screaming it on par. Do I agree with every daggum on par call? Heck no. Heck no. But it's respect. You aren't in, in blue. Leave them alone. You didn't go through training. They're not perfect. They're not going to catch every call correctly. But you hush. The only reason why your mouth should be going is you're just cheering on that your team. And if the other team makes a good play, I still scream and holler because I'm sorry, but or I'm not sorry. These kids are doing a good daggum job. That's the only time a parent should be heard in the stands is screaming and hollering for good. Not because, you know, you're ticked off or want to argue with something. You want to argue, go take it to the the driveway. <laughs> that, it, they ain't, that perturbs me as a parent. And like I said, as a parent coach for many years, and trust me, oh boy, and I'm living in a very political town, and we, like I said, my husband and I coached for many years, and we got it. You need to play my kid this way, and you're doing this wrong. Well, guess what? If you think you can do better, then you take the time out, you coach, take off work, don't get paid, and get crutted on by all the other parents. So that's my take on it. Parents need to shush up unless they're hooting and hollering for good. Great advice. Great advice. Let's uh, go back and you kind of could like summarize this and you, you pretty much summarized it, but I just want to go a little bit more in depth on it. So let's go back now to when your kid was in the ages of five to nine years old. Can you walk us through that age and like how you parented them? Okay. So again, because like I said, you know, being an athlete myself and my husband was one too, you know, obviously we had an understanding. Now I'm not saying my husband and I are perfect parents. No. I'm sure I might have even myself in the stands said something or whatever. But again, I, I always try to self like control or whatever. But when it came to the boys at that age, um, like I said, Jordan kind of got the benefit of both worlds. Uh, Little League is very rule oriented and um, the rules are much different than Dixie baseball. So he got to learn first Little League rules and how to, you know, their way of playing and then coming down here to the south and first of all playing year round <laughs> and then the rules being a little bit different so you know there was a, a, a period of time where he had to adjust and you know adjustment period but um for both of them at that age they were in the uh, Dixie Dixie uh, league um which was through city so you're paying your city uh league which you know usually runs you like $40, $45 per kid for the, I think it's three months that you play, which is about 20, 20 games, usually a season. Um, but both of mine, like I said, um, in our town, uh, select ball travel is, is huge. And so both of them have always been on select travel teams. Um, still through Dixie, uh, Justin like I said because I found baseball usually well. Hello? Yep, I'm okay. still here. Perfect, perfect. So now that you know what you know now, what things would you change if you could go back? And what mistakes do you think you made during that time? If you made any. Okay, for oh honey, I still make mistakes every day. Um <laughs> for for Jordan, I wish I had, you know, knew that it, like I said, this baseball youth, I wish I had known that there were these type of leagues out there um, because I think he would have had a lot more fun because uh, for Justin, the experience, you know, you got to look at my son, Justin, right now he's 15 years old. He's almost six, four and he weighs 290 pounds. He a big boy. Wow. And yeah, he a big boy. And he is one heck of a first baseman. He put Cecil and Prince Fielder right on task. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> and uh, so anytime we go to these tournaments, for Justin, you know, in the baseball youth and now all American, um, what's been really cool for him is, uh, when you go, you meet all these players, not only from all over the U S like I said, some are from other countries. That has been the coolest thing for him. And, I'm talking, uh, I'm, I'm talking about ages five to nine. I'm trying to like break it down to like anyone okay. that could relate from any parent could relate from that age. If they ever read this or see this, okay. they're like, well, Oh, from yeah. five to nine. If you can't remember, that's fine too, you know. Well, five, I was starting so young at five is harder because 
No, no, what I'm saying because travel, because there, you can get, you know, um, T ball, you can have what's called competitive T ball. Um, but these other organizations I was talking about, none of them start before 8U. So for from the age of five, which would be T ball, um, there wasn't anything really different I could do because there was, there's not anything out there anyway. So I can't even suggest anything for a parent at starting at eight. Um, what I would do different for Jordan is get, you know, like I said, my mistake or my regret for him is not knowing that these programs were available starting for eight U for him, because then I could have gotten him introduced, um, into these programs. And that was a, that's a huge thing. That's been a benefit for Justin because he's learning about other states. He's learning about other players and how they play and especially those that come from different countries. So the only thing I regret for Jordan for eight and under was like I said, that we didn't, I didn't know about these programs. Um, for Justin, the only thing I can say for that age period, um, I really wouldn't do anything different because I started in it because I found it, and so he's done very well. Um, like I said, he's done extremely well in that. So, so I wish I had found the, the programs a lot sooner. Okay, so now let's go into ages 10 to 12-year-old. Can you walk us through that age? And uh, um, I think this is probably the travel ball age. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That was when I went in the travel ball, was 10 years old. So. Um, what changes did you see into your kid and what advice would you give a parent um, in this age group? It, you know, in all honesty, Jermaine, you're, you're wanting to break it down for age groups. And I totally get that because different, you know, different parents start kids at different ages. But for me, because I started my kids at such a young age, it's almost the same, same aspect, each age group that you want to break down for my two children. So it's harder for me to be able to give advice to a parent on that, that type of specificness of the age group, because again, for Jordan, I wish I knew about these programs. The only thing he could do was the travel baseball and he did extremely well. Um, that was just finding local teams for him to try out and to, you know, either make the team or not, but he did. And then, you know, play travel baseball um, for Justin He's always, again, he, he has always made the travel teams, but I found the programs for him that he's been able to do extensive traveling, obviously, all over the U.S. So, um, like I said, breaking it down for ages on my two at such a young age is, is difficult. The only regret, again, even at this age, was that I wish that I knew about these programs for Jordan. Perfect, perfect. That's good advice. Um... Let me ask you this, because you talked about it earlier. You said you were sending emails out to college coaches. Um, so can you go more into that, like all the things you did um, as a parent um, for your kid during that whole recruiting process? Can you walk us through? Oh, yeah. Okay. So back then, when Jordan went, you know, and played all those, it was video cameras. We didn't have cool little cell phones that took video. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally video cameraed every single one of his games. And what I would do is um, take clips from each of those videos, and then I put them all together on ACD. I uh, hope parents know what those still are. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I actually mailed the CDs. I would go literally, seriously, on every school website and find out who the AD or the head coach was and mail those CDs out. And then once the internet and email to where you could actually attach like videos and our, you know, smartphones came out, which, you know, ended up being towards Jordan's lat latter couple years. Thankfully I was tired. Them stamps were killing me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> again, I still stuck with it with Jordan. Cause now I'm going to start doing it with Justin this year with him being a junior. Um, but anyway, with Jordan, um, I literally would go on every school website that he even would say, Hey, I might want to play for this school or, I mean, even far-fetched schools, seriously, like ones that you would never even think he could, you know, want to go to. It didn't matter, bottom line. Um, but here's the big thing. Every coach that went to those college showcases, I found their contact info. And guess what? After the showcase, I followed up with a thank you email to them 
And in that email, I attached the video clips I had put together saying, I just wanted to remind, let you know, or I'm trying to rem remember how I said it. Um, I thank them for their um, time and effort and professionalism and input. And um, I'd have to like pull it up because I still have folders back then. But basically I did a thank you email. And then in it, I said, I just, in case you want, may not remember uh, my son's name, I've attached a short clip of some of his premier plays. Um, he's gonna be graduating X date. You know, if, if you would like a, any more video or to you know, talk to us, you know, here's my contact info. But anyway, bottom line is every showcase, college showcase um, coach, they heard from me more than once because like I said, um, as parents, if, as they do these college showcases, they'll see a lot of the same coaches at, at all of them. Like you'll, you'll start seeing it. And like I said, with Jordan, that's how his name got around because it was one coach that knew that his friend from a different school was looking for a third baseman type thing and said, Hey, I seen this kid at this cut. And that's how that college was the one that, you know, called, contacted us to say, Hey, listen, you were referred to me because that his actual coach didn't go to the showcase. His, his coach was told by his friend that had gone to the showcase that he saw a third baseman that he might be interested in. So anyway, um, I contacted every single showcase coach, but I also on the schools, like I said, every school that we thought that he might want to go in, go to, or even had an interest or whatever. I literally went online to their websites, pulled up either their ADs or their head coaches. If I have both of the, you know, I did, if it listed both the AD and the, um, the head coach, I basically CC'd them both on the email. And I basically just introduced my kid and said that there was a short video attached, gave a quick bio of them and sent it off. Do you recommend that every uh, parent do that? Do you think that is beneficial for the recruiting process? I can't say if it necessarily is beneficial or not. So why take the chance of it not? That's my thing. That's, um, a, good, that's a good point. Because granted, yeah, granted Jordan's was totally different. Obviously him going to the showcase is what got him seen, but it, and it wasn't from my emails, but why take the chance? If there's anything you can do for your kid as a parent, you want to do it. And if it's only going to take time, and this is the one part in this whole process that's free, except for your time, freaking do it. I mean, that's the <laughs> whole point. You want your kid to be able to go to college and you not have to take out basically three mortgages on your house, to pay for it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like common sense, people. I mean, if it's free, just do it. Yes, it's going to take some work, but that's where I said, how determined are the parents? How committed are the parents? Yes, we want your student athlete to be committed, but it also takes commitment from the parents. So throughout this, uh, actually now let's go into the recruiting because you just, so now he, he has gotten recruited. What was that like talking to the coach? What was, uh, what were the things that you asked? Did you take a step back? Can you talk us through that whole situation? Well, first of all, when they started, you know, contacting us, those that were interested, you, first thing you do as a parent and as a player, we go on their website, we take a look at their team stats, we take a look at, you know, I read bios on the coaches, I read bios on the school itself, um, I, I look at comments, now that we have so much social media and Facebook and all that, that you can actually go and like pull up those schools on social media and see comments from uh, students from parents. I mean, you can see even comments from parents that if a teacher ticks, you know, them off because they gave their kid a bad grade, that parent sometimes is leaving a comment saying, don't send your kid to school here, you know? So I, it, yeah. So thankfully, you know, when it comes now to Justin, this is more helpful, but even with Jordan, when it, social media wasn't as big, that's what we still did. When they were contacting us, we, we did the investigating because I'm not just giving you my kid, man. I don't care what you offer him. I want to know. So, I mean, I asked the questions. I was like, what, what is his, why is he going to be a benefit to you? Is he going to ride the pine? Is he going to play? Is he a third baseman? Or are you going to put him at left? I mean, 
But like I said, my son, we've raised our children to know that if your coach wants you to play left field, even though I have one that plays first and one that played third, you're going to freaking play left field and you're not going to whine about it. You're going to just hush. But I still wanted to know what was their long-term goal for my kid? What was their short-term goal? What did they see out of my son? What made them want to even talk to us? I asked all those questions. And as a parent, you kind of need you need to. Because like I said, you're trusting that coach, hopefully for the next four years. So that for me as a mom, that for me to entrust my child to you, it, it takes a lot. And so I just wanted to know everything I could. I wanted to have all the information to make the best possible choice for Jordan. And ultimately, it was still his choice. And I'm going to say it. I know it might tick off some parents. But about it, bottom line, because, yeah, when you have multiple offers, it gets a little crazy and chaotic and you're scared because you don't know which way to go or who to go with. So, I mean, our we rely on our faith 100%. But then also I say, you got to go with your gut. Which one made you feel most comfortable? What, what one did you, when you walked out on that college baseball field, what one did you feel like, oh, this is home? And sure enough, that was home. Amazing. So throughout this entire process, what's been the best thing you learned? Hmm. As a parent, honestly, how proud I am of my kids, seriously. Um, when they put their minds to it, they don't stop. They give 100%. Because it's not an easy road. Bottom line, it's not. And like I said, it's, it's expensive. I mean, it, it takes a lot out of everybody. But I'm very proud of them because, you know, taking Jordan, for instance, he busted his butt. Played, played ball for four years, got a college degree, and had a job that entire time. Lived on his own, didn't live, live in the dorm, so he had his own rent. He busted bum. And look, literally, hasn't even walked across the stage because of this COVID to get his degree yet, but graduated in December, and he's already got his first daggum coaching job. What, what college graduate can say their first daggum year they already got a head you know, college, you know, yes. coaching position. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of him. And it's because, like I said, it takes determination and hard work. And it takes it from all of them. It's not just the player and not just the student. It's, it's from the whole family. You have to have a support system. So I've relied on my husband. I've relied on friends. You know, it, it takes a whole community, honestly. Yes, yes. What's I'm the very most proud. That's one thing. What's the most effective advice you ever got when it comes to parenting advice? And what's the most effective advice you ever got when it comes to the recruiting process? Well, recruiting goes back to hearing that because like I said Jordan would have been a junior that year. So hearing that from him really you know, as a parent sitting back, it was like a light bulb go off of yeah you're, you're right duh you know why would they want to recruit somebody that has played year round since basically three or four years old and you know so that's probably the biggest advice that really clicked and then um as a parent just learning to like I said I'm very outspoken I I, I am my husband he's very quiet and just if something ticks him off or he's not happy with that game and how it's going, he likes to go to the concession stand. So me, you know, <laughs> I had to learn my set of parent to zip it. Shush. Unless, like I said, unless I was cheering, you didn't need to hear from me. That was the hardest thing for me to learn, but I did. Because let me tell you, those parents that are like a bunch of jackals out in the audience or in the stands, your kids are going to pay for it one way or another. Trust me. You may not see it right then and there, but eventually they're going to pay for it. So, yeah, that was the that was the biggest thing for me to learn. That's a good that's a good one. So, what's the worst advice you ever got when it comes to the recruiting process? Um, that my kid was never going to amount to anything. He would never play college baseball, that he was a slacker and 
um, basically sucked. That was the worst that we ever got told. And um, the worst advice uh, was that the high school coach said that he would actually, um, it, it was his job to get Jordan a college offer. And for me just to sit back and hush, that was the worst. Cause, and thankfully I didn't listen to him because he's nope. a bunch of, he's a bleh. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, that was the worst advice I ever got. And thank God I did not listen to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of parents uh, think that their coaches are the reason, you know what I mean? They, they believe that they're going to get their kid to college and, and uh, that's not how it works. No, they don't. Yeah, they don't. Because first of all, most high school coaches, they don't have any type of relationship with any college coaches. A lot of parents don't know about that. But the only time a college or a high school coach really talks to a college coach is if somehow that college coach heard about one of their specific players. But high school coaches don't look out to actually build relationships with any specific colleges. Even if that was their alma mater or whatever, I've never once, and this is even before Jordan became a high schooler, but just having friends that had kids that were older than Jordan, I've never once heard of uh, a relationship where a high school coach, you know, from his alma mater was, had a hookup, you know, for kids to go to school there or something. Never once. So for parents to think that their high school coaches are going to open doors for their kids, no. They aren't right. It's up to you. One question I just got from my parents. What is one expenditure that you wouldn't spend again? One expenditure. Yeah. Um, honestly, there hasn't been seriously because, um, it has all been expensive and I have no, I can honestly say I have no regrets when it comes to Jordan and Justin and what they've done, you know, going to these other tournaments that Jordan's or Justin's had the ability to do. Did he win all of them? Uh, Heck no. But did I have any regret of spending, you know, basically a thousand plus dollars that weekend? No. So honestly, I've had honestly no regrets because I've enjoyed also because my kids love the game. And that's again, what's very key. We've built family memories to last a lifetime. So, no, I actually have no regrets on any of the expenditures. Um, another parent just asked, what type of work ethic did your son have? Were there times he wavered? How did you keep him motivated slash committed? How did you stay motivated when your child wasn't? Oh, that's a good one. Bottom line, you just sit them down and talk to them. That's the first thing. You got to talk to them. See where they're coming at. Okay. Is school stressing them out? Is a girl stressing them out? What what has it that is inside your head right now that you're just not 100%? You need to talk. Bottom line, it's always a communication thing. I'm not just going to put money out and spend money on a tournament if I haven't talked to you to see that you want to. Again, my kids had to want to do something. I wasn't just going to do it for them. So do you want to? So communication with your kid is 100% the top, top priority. So yes, you know, especially say they come off a bad game and they lost, and maybe they made the last out at the plate or in the field, they're going to get bummed out or they're going to, you know, or they're overwhelmed because like I said, with school work, especially if you're a student athlete, you need to talk to your kid. What's going on? What can we do? What, you know, what do you, do you need a break? Sometimes they do need a break. I mean, like I said, a, a, a parent can tell by looking at our kids in their faces pretty much. If his arm was feeling like jelly or, you know, his, um, my oldest, Jordan, was diagnosed with um, juvenile, um, oh, sugars, I just had a brain fart, uh, arthritis in his back. So there would be times where his back would be sore, obviously. And so I would have to say, Jordan, do you need to take a break? And I would have to tell him, you've got to tell your coach. And you know how, you know, you're always taught that you don't tell your coach that you're hurt. Baloney! Because you're only going to hurt worse. So if you're hurt, you torn. Communication, 100%. Great. 
Um, so I have another question from a parent. Can you hear me? I sure can. Um, this one is, what's one thing or piece of advice people got wrong or was different when you got to the college level? So what's one piece of advice like people said was, you know, wrong or is completely different that when you, when you got into the college level? That you're always going to get played. That's not true because when you go to college, they, they recruit huge, huge, huge. And they will usually have a team that is way too deep. And as a parent, you're like, why is my kid not, you know, I talked to you, you said he was a starter. There were times when Jordan did not play, but he kept the attitude up. He kept the boys on the squad up. So that, that was one thing that, you know, I was promised the world when he, when he was being recruited. And guess what? No, because real world happens once they already sign the dotted line and step out on their first practice field real world it's called real world so that is the biggest thing I can tell parents um no even if your kid's a standout player it does not mean that they're going to be a standout player in college bottom line That's was bad. Jordan phenomenal when he played heck yeah his stats proved it but did he was he always a starter no did he ride the pine sometimes yes did he play third base every game no so that was that would be what I would say um, was there anything your son said he wished he had done in preparation for college? Jordan, yes. You know, because obviously seeing what Justin's been able to do with, with these new programs, yeah, he, he said it. He's like, man, Ma, I wish we had, you'd known about it. Or even he, he, like, he tries to take the blame. He'll say, I wish I had known about it. And I'm like, son, dude, if I had known about it, bud, seriously, you would have been put in it too. So that's one thing that he says. Um, he doesn't have any regrets, like, personally, because I actually did talk to him this weekend when you had uh, texted me a little bit to get some information from him. He, uh, he again, he doesn't have any regrets either. Um, if he has a regret, he would be like, yeah, maybe I had an off-game type situation. Um, or he, maybe he didn't get played as much as he wanted to all four years. But he doesn't actually have any, like, mental, like, regrets himself like he got his college education he played four years of college baseball and now he's got his first coach job so he he's extremely excited he's very nervous but he's very excited <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um what's the school slash athletic balance like realistic or too much do you feel your son was adequately prepared is he now adequately supported this was just a question just given no, um, now I can't say for all schools because thankfully, like I said, I have other friends that have kids that have gone to college and played, you know, college sports, um, some baseball, some different sports, some schools are different. So on Jordan's experience, they were very even keel. Like if he started to even fall behind in his class and, you know, I'm not going to say it, but it's not because he went to a Christian school but sometimes in the athlete, but they still care about the athletes because that's where they get their money from. But anyway, um, they, you know, like I said, his, his um, advisor was the head coach because when you, you, your advisor usually is because also his advisor was one of the professors. He had a doctorate. So again, a smaller college like he went to grant was, you know, a great, big Christian college, but it, you know, considered like for D ones or anything that it's lower. So for him, they didn't let their athletes get behind. They were on them. And like I said, he was able to maintain not only going to school and making the dean's list, he um, played, and he also had a job. And like I said, he lived off campus and paid his own rent. That's awesome. So, yeah, it, uh, honestly, on that one, like I said, I, was, I meant to say it. I've had, I do have, have talked to some parents that have kids that go to other big schools, some D1, D2s. And it's a walk in the, in the park for some of them because they get all the kitty class type situations. Um, I've heard that. Does it happen? I'm sure it does. Um, does it happen for all athletes? No, I'm, I'm sure it don't. But 
there are some schools and some programs that I'm sure that they basically burp your child for four years. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, unfortunately for parents, I gotta say it's a chance that we take. So I guess my, my suggestion or whatever would be again, do your homework research that school see what the bottom line is see what the bio is see what the comments are you can reach out to other people that currently go to that school via these social media as a athlete because it'll say like even his school central baptist athletics you can con like make comments on their specific facebook pages and be like hey i'm a potential parent of an athlete and ask these questions parents do your daggum homework if you truly care do your homework. Let's get into that. That yeah. I only have a few more questions for you, but okay. let's you're get into that. Because when you're saying stuff, it gives me more ideas. But like, let's go into that yeah. homework stuff. Like, what do you mean when you say that? Do your homework. What should they do? Like I said, going on that school website, finding out who's who, finding out the bios, finding out the school stats for that sport that your child's about to play. Um, going on the social media sites and, and looking at comments and reaching out to uh, students, to even faculty, whatever. I mean, like I said, if you don't want to be taking a third mortgage out on your house and you, you want you know, your kid to have a four-year college education paid for your sport, you're going to have to do your homework. So it has nothing to do even with reaching out to coaches about you know, video or whatever. I'm talking about just the school itself. Even if my child wasn't an uh, athlete, I wasn't, I would never just, you know, send my kid off for four years to any, any college whatsoever. I'm still going to do my homework. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go on their website. I'm going to research the SKU. I'm going to reach out to prior students and current students. I'm going to do the homework. That's interesting. That's, that's awesome. Great advice. Now, this is a question I just got asked right now. They wanted to ask you, how did you deal with time? being a mother, working, taking time, or taking them to practice? How did you solve the time issue? What, what's mm -hmm. your secret? Okay, unfortunately, like for a few seconds, either we lagged or something about time. What was your question, hon? How did you deal with time? Being a mother, working, taking, taking them to practice. How did you solve the time issue? What's your secret? <laughs> well, let's just say it's teamwork with my husband and myself, especially when Jordan and Justin were both playing. There were times where their schedules would be one child was in one city, one child was in another. We just split our time. Um, he, my husband would go to one game, I would go to another game. But we never, like, did it to where I went to all Jordans and my husband went to all Justins. Or You know what I'm saying? We split that up. Um, when it came to practices, pretty much, you know, up through high, obviously when it's in college and after, we don't have to worry about all that, but, you know, up through high school and stuff, um, until Jordan started driving, which Justin starts obviously in a few weeks, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> prayers, please. Um, <laughs> but, uh, for practices and stuff like that, you know, schools know that most parents do work and stuff. So that wasn't really an issue. And so, um, you know, because usually practice is literally right after school, so the kids don't, don't even come home. Um, I can't say that for all, you know, I don't know how that happens with other parents for schedules. I don't know. But, you know, games are obviously a different story because, yes, those are usually later. So either, yes, I would have to take him or, um, you know, bottom line, I would have to take him. It's a long walk. But now that, you know, he's in high school, when you go to games, you obviously are on the bus, so parents don't have to do that. The only thing that sucks for that part is after a long night, parents are tired, and we got to go back to the school to wait in the parking lot for our kids to get home from the bus because you can't just take them home from the games because that's against UIL, the health insurance, all that hoopla. But anyway, so coming from time a time perspective for high school, you know, bottom line, uh, all the way up from T ball up, I mean, it's again a commitment from the parent how committed are you to to your child that wants to play because you know there are so many parents that have to work and some work nights and stuff so there are ways around it you make friends with uh, the other parents on the teams and be like hey listen I gotta work 
is there any way that my kid can go with you? But hey, the next game or you work things out like that. So, you know, hopefully as a parent, you can build a relationship with the other parents because sometimes you need to lean on them. Or again, like I said, it, it takes a community. This entire area, this, we live in what's called Bowie County. They all know my son's name because he's played all over this area. But I've also reached out to them as a community to help me because, uh, hey, I can't go. Can you help me out? Can you take my kid? You know, that type of thing. Family members, like I said, again, you reach out to your family to say, hey, I need some help. So reaching out to a family that said, you know, I can't, I got to work. Can you take, you know, Jordan type thing. So again, it's all about the relationship building with those around you because it does take a community to help sometimes. Um, with Justin, it's been the same way. If for some reason I couldn't or his dad couldn't, I reached out and said, hey, can y'all help us here? Um, again, he starts in a couple weeks. So, you know, once your kid's at the age where they can start driving, yeah, it's a lot of stress off your shoulders, but then you have the stress of, oh my God, my kid's driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. But, but it, like I said, reach out and make relationships because you're going to also learn from other parents. I mean, again, I mean, I, I can learn something brand new, even though I've had a kid graduate and I got one in, I can still learn something new from another parent that I didn't know about. So that it's relationship building, bottom line. Right, right. Um, I just want to go back, just like I said, a few more questions. I want to go You're back fine. to um, him leaving on that last, that day, the first day he left to college. Can you tell us that story? And then the second one I have is, his first game, can you tell us that story? How did you guys feel? Like, what, what did you feel throughout that whole process? Okay, so uh, sometimes I get accused of being uh, um, an uh, umbrella parent, <laughs> and that's because I'm very involved with my kids. And people like to joke with me and say, you know, the umbilical cord was cut when they were born. So <laughs> birthday scoop. And <laughs> yeah, I get picked on about it. Anyway, <laughs> um, when he went off and because he didn't stay local, that was really hard on me. Re like really hard on me. Um, the fact that he's moving home to this area because of the coaching position, I'm like, you, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I have missed my kid. <laughs> but the yeah, for him to literally drive away, because for him, it wasn't us dropping him off. Like, we got to do the parent weekend thing, you know what I'm saying? But he actually had his car, and so he drove off already because, you know, he was an athlete. So, you know, parents need to be aware. They have to report well before school starts and before, like, the parent activities and all that stuff. So, fair warning, parents. You're going to say, you're going to be doing this. Bye. <laughs> So that was like the hardest thing for me because he's my baby and always will be. I don't care how old he is. So that was really hard for me, but I knew he was driving towards his dream. So yeah, it, it was like a catch 22. I was extremely sad, but I was extremely excited because I knew he literally was driving to his dream. So, you know, he, like I said, he reports for, for summer camp, obviously is what they call it. And, you know, they're allowed to contact us, but we're not supposed to go see them and they're not supposed to come home, but they can call. So that was really hard. So parents beware if you're like me, it's going to happen. And so, um, you know, just, you could hear the excitement in his voice from just summer camp. And, um, you could also hear the tired, like the fatigue <laughs> because it is totally different from high school. They, they beat you up to basically they tear you down to build you up type situation. And boy, is it true. And, you know, the parent in me wanted to just like reach out to that coach and be like, but you promised. <laughs> and I couldn't because he was on his own. So his first game, which happened to be like, usually ends up being what they call parent weekend for athletes. Like I said, every school is different, so I'm just going based on my experience. Um, but for parent weekend, it ended up being first home game type situation. The only reason why you heard me 
was because I was being good and you heard me screaming, yay, Jordan, you know, and his team and rooting his team on and then listening to the other parents to hear what the kids' names were so I could learn the kids' names and stuff like that. So um, it was very exciting and a very proud moment. And then for me to have to drive home that night was a very hard moment. So it, <laughs> even as a parent, our emotions are going to be like a roller coaster. And now that he's even graduated and coming home, there's still going to be a roller coaster because he's my child. So I'm <clears throat> almost 50 and my mom's like that over me. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, I guess we're pretty much finishing up, but, uh, what, when it comes to the parents, um, what's your last piece of advice? Is there anything we left that, you know, something that you want to say to them? Well, like I said, um, just know that, yes, you're going to be it's expensive. So, you know, we never touch base on it and I'll just be quick. There are things that you can do to help offset it. You can have fundraisers. Car washes are the biggest thing in the world, whether it's for a team or just an individual player for your kid. But if you're going to do an individual so that people don't think you're like trying to just, you know, make money, make sure you have, you know, printed up, you know, the league that your kid's playing for or what the tournament is. Have information handy so that if that car pulls up and they're like mm, kind of skeptical, you can give them that information and be like, listen, literally, my kid is playing in this tournament and that's what I'm raising money for. Now, me coming from a small count or well, it's a big county, but in basically what we call a small community, it is easier. So it's going to be harder for, you know, parents that come from big cities that, you know, don't have that community feeling and community backing. So then I would say instead of maybe, but try car washes because you can make killer money, but, you know, bake sales, stuff like that. But um, the biggest thing is, like I said, it's gonna, it takes, what I want to tell parents is it takes commitment from everybody, everybody involved. When Jordan was playing and Justin, you know, was just littler, it even took his commitment of actually going because he had to sit in the friggin' stands with us, you know, weekend after weekend. I mean, I have a picture of him falling asleep in a chair as a little, little guy. So, I mean, it takes commitment from everybody and build your community within yourself and, and your relationships outside yourself. Talk to parents, talk to, talk to people and, and get information and do the homework find out what's out there um I just you know now that we have homework find out what programs and what tournaments and stuff are available for your kid and 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 go for it but it like I said bottom line it takes commitment from everybody can you also say uh give us a little bit more about baseball youth the whole program uh, the actual about. program itself yeah. like what how do we yeah, get to um, it baseball yeah. Youth. yeah you can go yeah you just go to baseballyouth.com and like i said they start you can do tournaments starting from eight your eight u um it'll say like nominate a player but in their website it says events and things like that and it gives you a bio of what they are but you can really like like i said you can see all these different tournaments from all over the u.s um and the price averages about $400 to put your kid in the tournament. And then you obviously have your travel and, you know, food and that that's where the expenses come in. So the actual tournament itself is quite reasonably, it's like I said, like 400 bucks max. Um, once you get into the program, um, you'll get like, if you register your kid by X date, they knock a hundred dollars off, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, baseballyouth.com and then, once you get into them, like I said, you can't advance to All-American until you've played in baseball youth. And then it goes to baseball elite, uh, All-American, game day USA. So you have to start at baseball youth and go up. And you can't just jump in unless you do a tryout, which is, you know, is difficult. But, I mean, it can be done because obviously a lot of parents don't know starting at 8U that this program's available. And they might not know until, say, their kid's like 14 or whatever. but um, in that, in their sites, it tells you, you know, if you run into that situation, what you got to do to obviously get your kids seen to be able to compete. So, um, baseballyouth.com is the first one. And like I said, you, you, you progress after that. Like I said, you then go to elite and it's all American and then it's game day USA, which top, taps out at 18 U. 
Well, thank you so much for your time. You gave up so much value bombs. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you jumping on and being so like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. So um, thank you so much. Yeah. I will be having you on anytime. soon, though. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, soon. I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to have you back on soon because I think this is like for me a little test to see what, what was happening, the questions right. and stuff. And I would like to put it like yeah. make it more better, you know? So I got you. Hey, all whatever right. we can do, I can do, Jermaine. Seriously, I got your back. All right. Thank you so much, Lori. You're welcome. You have a great evening. You too. All right. Bye. Hey. All right. Bye.